Okay, hi everybody. I am Sue Brooke, and I'll um, I'm going to be sharing my screen, and uh, so I can show you a few few pictures and and a few things about what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing it now if it's going to work. We'll see if uh, technology works with us today. <laughs> we all know how that is, right? Okay. So can you guys all see that? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to kind of minimize that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So those of you, and I can't see that you're there, so hopefully you'll stick around till the end because, uh, yeah, I'm going to make an offer thing at the end about working with me for free. So here we go. Today we're going to talk about how to attract your most profitable customers, turn them into raving fans, and have them knocking down your door with referrals. Okay, we all want that, right? Everybody wants referrals. So I'm going to be talking tonight about send out cards. And this, and the reason I'm talking about this particular tool is it is my absolute favorite go-to relationship marketing follow-up referral generating system for small business. It literally is a, um, a system that works for every kind of business. So take whatever it is you can from here and figure out how you can put it into your own business. Okay. So why am I an expert in this? Why am I here teaching you guys this? Um, it kind of goes back. Um, my first business was when I was 22 years old. I started a ballroom dance studio after I got out of college. Um, but my big claim to fame was a school that I started back in 1998. And I literally started that business out of my living room. It started as a tutoring business. I literally put one ad in the paper and I got one phone call. <laughs> one. And that one phone call, um, turned into what I did, the system that I'm using. And I did not use send out cards back then, just so you know. So um, I literally got one, one customer in from the newspaper. From that customer, I took such good care of them. And I did a lot of the things I'm going to teach you today that grew it into a 5,000 square foot learning center with two locations, a lot of kids, thousands of kids we tutored, and, um, and we actually had an after-school program, a private school, and all kinds of stuff. And this is a picture I just found today that I hadn't seen in a long time. Kind of makes me sad, but uh, that was one of the first, one of our summer camp days. And so we had kids all ages, and I'm going to refer back to that in a minute. One of the reasons why I want to share this tool with you is because of my story, my most recent story, I should say. So a year and a half ago, it'll be June, gosh, it'll be two years, June 14th, I got a crazy message on Facebook from a woman that said, I'm a cousin of your mother's. And the first thing I thought was, well, my mother died when I was only eight years old, and I don't remember her. And I really don't know anyone on that side of the family. So she said, she, she typed to me, she said, uh, I have something important to tell you. And she said, it looks like you have a half sister. <laughs> and uh, of course, I was a little shocked about that. And so I said, okay, well, how did that happen? And long story, very short, she told me that her nephew put his DNA into Ancestry and it matched up with a second cousin, which happened to be the girl in the picture. Um, the, the three girls right there, the one that's on the right is the sister I grew up with. She was only five years old when our mother died. And the girl on the left is Kathy. And Kathy was the story evolved after we, we um, you know, started doing some research and all that kind of stuff. And it turns out that our mother came to California from Nebraska where I'm from originally, and she met a Navy man, got pregnant, you know, back in 1954, I guess that happened a lot, and gave her up for adoption, and never told anyone. So, long story short, I have a very beautiful, amazing sister that I have only known for uh, about a year and a half, and the picture on the right there is the first day we met. I drove up here from Southern California, I'm in Sebastopol, in Northern California right now, and that was the first day. And we did not plan that outfit, just so you know. <laughs> we did not plan it. So um, that is my story. So now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this mostly because I moved here to be with her, and I did not know one single person. 
I didn't know anyone in this town and I had already sold my school three years ago and I had to figure out how I was going to meet other business owners. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, my sister went off to work. She runs a beautiful home goods store in Sebastopol. And she said, you know, I can't just hang out every day with you. I have to go to work. And I said, okay, well, I got to figure this out. So what I did, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to within a few short months after I started doing this system that I'm going to tell you about. I literally, everywhere I go, people know who I am. It's hilarious because my sister will call me or come home and say, oh my gosh, these people came in my store today and they all know you. Uh, so everywhere we go, people know me now and they used to know her. She grew up here. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. All right. So the bottom line is this. I knew when I moved here, I had to build relationships. It really is all about relationships. So when it comes to business relationship marketing is where it's at now it's and i'm going to give you some statistics and stuff when we go along but relationship marketing a lot of people get it backwards okay they hear yes i know i need to do relationship marketing they don't really know what it is so they do it backwards they put their emphasis on the marketing word but the bottom line is you need to focus on relationship 80% of the time, 80% of your time when you're out there and you're, you're in the community and you're around your prospects and your customers and all those people, it's 80% of your time should be spent building relationships and only about 20% or less, in my opinion, on marketing. So everything in life is about creating relationships. Now, why is there a picture of a crock pot in a microwave up here? <laughs> um, someone actually, I, I didn't create this uh, or come up with this, but I fell in love with it. Let me ask you this question. You can answer in your head there. Um, would you rather eat food out of a crock pot or would you rather have food from a microwave? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to answer it the same way I did. I lived many years on microwave food and it kind of grosses me out now. It's not good. Um, Nothing that happens really fast is good, especially when it comes to relationships. Relationships take time. So I call it crock pot marketing. <laughs> take your time to build relationships. So the three R's that are the most important things in marketing and growing your business are the three R's are relationships, obviously, and there's three types of relationships I'm going to tell you about. Referrals, which we all love referrals, and we want, I think, I think everyone's goal in business is to have a hundred percent referral based business, which I basically, I do. I really do. Um, and retention. So we're going to talk about that as well. So I will keep going. So there are three types of relationships in, uh, that you need to worry about and you really need to work on these relationships in this order. Okay. The first relationship is the relationship with yourself. What does that mean? All right, before you can go out there and put yourself out there, you kind of need to know who you are. Who are you? Uh, you've all heard what is your why? Why, are, why do you get up in the morning? What are you doing? What, especially with your business, you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. And what makes you unique? What sets you apart? Um, I speak to a lot of realtors, for example. There are millions of realtors, right? People are buying you, and so you need to set yourself apart. And it's like that in, in just about any business, actually. The second type of relationship you want to work on is your personal relationships. This, I believe, is the key to everything in life, actually. Um, you can't work on your relationship in your business until you work on your personal relationships. What does that mean? It means treating others the way you want to be treated. You know, the basic golden rule that we all learned from when we were little. The second one here, being nice to people should become who you are. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever known someone? Maybe you were at an event or you were somewhere and you know, you see this person, you watch this person and they got kind of that grumpy look on their face. They're not really that nice of a person. Maybe they're the kind of person that they don't treat waitresses very well. You can usually tell a lot about people that way. But then someone will come up to them to talk to them, and, or you'll go up and talk to them, and all of a sudden it's like a, a little switch flipped. And all of a sudden they're all nice and happy and they're smiling and everything. And then when you walk away, it's like that 
uh, switch gets flipped back and they're back to being grumpy again. So you can't do that. Being nice to people is not something you turn on and off. So be a nice person, in other words, all the time. Work on being that. And this one, the third one, to me is one of the most important things anyone should learn in life, and that's taking a personal interest in other people. Now, I'm gonna give you another scenario. How many of you guys have talked to someone? Maybe you met them for coffee. Maybe you met someone in a networking event and you go to meet them for coffee and you're, you ask them, oh, tell me more about you and your business. Well, you know, we all know people love to talk about themselves. So this person is talking about themselves, they're all happy and they're just going on and on and on about themselves and their business and how awesome they are, right? <laughs> and then when, have, have you ever done where it flips around? So they go, well, what about you? And then you start talking about yourself and then you kind of watch their face and it's like they're looking through you. They're not really paying attention to what you're saying. It's almost like they're thinking about what they're going to say next. Okay. That's the opposite of taking a personal interest in someone. So one thing that I've learned is people are fascinating. They are amazing. People have the most amazing stories. And so one of my favorite questions to ask people is what is your story? Tell me about your story. I want to know people before I'm going to go and try to get business from them. And of course, number three is why we're all here tonight, I'm assuming, <laughs> is the relationships in business. Okay, in order to have a good build relationships in business, the bottom line is, and if you've been in business for a while, you know that people buy, buy from people they know, like, and trust. People buy you. And I just have to say, I, um, I'm an alumni of a program. It's, it's a business, almost like a, a business uh, program called the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. It's like getting an MBA in business. And when I went through that, and that was quite a few years ago, um, they really taught us to, if you are a business owner, you should like not, people shouldn't even know that you own the business, that you should be unseen. But that was then. <laughs> Nowadays, everything is changing, everything, and you're going to hear some more statistics in a minute, but really, people really are buying you, even if you don't think they are. Now, I love this. Um, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, the example I can give you to this is in my school that I owned, it, we had an after school program and a summer camp and we'd have a lot of parents bringing their kids in for a tour to see if they wanted to bring their child to us. There was a lot of competition, a lot of other schools out there. And um, I had one employee that she was a director and when the person would come in and they'd start talking, all she did was talk about herself. She would tell them how many degrees she had and how much experience and how she was so good at this and so good at that. And the people's eyes were just, it, a lot of times they would just go, okay, well, that's really nice and, and nothing would happen. So I had to talk with her once and I said, why don't you turn it around? People love talking about themselves and their kids, right? And so if you take a personal interest in them and show how much you care for them, they will be your best referral partner for life. Okay, so now I wanna talk about networking because um, like I said, I moved out here and I had to figure out what I was gonna do <laughs> and where I was gonna go and uh, how I was gonna build, start building relationships. So I did a ton of networking, a ton. I just went on Meetup, I went to Chamber, Sites, and uh, every single networking type event I could possibly go to. So I'm sure you all know, you go to a networking event, here's what you see. This picture is what you see. <laughs> Everybody's handing out business cards. They're handing out business cards and then what do you do with them, right? They go in a shoebox somewhere. <laughs> How many shoeboxes of business cards have you thrown away in your lifetime? <laughs> oh my gosh. So um, let me talk to you about how, how to build relationships when you're networking. If you take nothing away from this, remember this little little thing right here this little chart right here all right when you meet anyone and it can be at a networking event it can be at the line at starbucks it doesn't make any difference every person you meet is at the top of this chart it's a contact okay a contact though that person that you meet for the first time let's say is going to fall into one of two buckets okay the one on the right is the prospect bucket what does that mean that means that person that you meet 
could very possibly turn into a customer. As you notice, that bucket is very small. <laughs> yes, we can help the world. Yes, our product or our services can help everybody. But the bottom line is not everybody wants what we're selling. And that's okay. In fact, I would much rather go to the other side of this little chart. I would, if a contact does not want what you're selling, doesn't need it or isn't ready yet, okay, which happens a lot, they might fall into the referral bucket. Look how big that bucket is. Every single person, and I keep forgetting to look at the statistics, but of how many people each person can know, I know it's a lot in the hundreds, sometimes more, right? Each person knows a lot of people, okay? I would much rather meet someone that maybe does not want, I, want what I'm selling, but I form a relationship with that person and they're going to tell everyone. So we should all be thinking all the time about everyone we meet. We build a relationship with them so that they, if you ever want to ask them to refer people, they will. And you won't ever have to even ask them because you've built a relationship. It's always about building the relationship first. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, since I can't see you guys on the screen right now, I'm going to ask you this question. The fortune is in the follow-up. How many people love to follow up? I ask that question when I speak at different networking events and different groups, and nobody ever raises their hands. <laughs> people really don't like to follow up. In fact, it kind of makes them hide <laughs> when you say, have you followed up? Well, let me teach you a way to make follow-up super, super fun and make it so you actually want to follow up all the time. That's what I'm going to teach you today. So the bottom line is, though, people do business with people. They know, like, and trust. We all know that. But only if they remember you. <laughs> if they remember you. And by the way, I'm just going to throw this bonus in real quick. Um, talking, Going back to the business cards, I just can't not tell you guys this. Your business card... Make sure your picture is on it. This is just like a bonus tip right now. Put your picture on it. I've had people say, oh, I don't like the way I look, da da da, da. But you know what the bottom line is? People are not going to remember you at all if they go home and they look at their stack of business cards and your picture's not on it. It's a way to build relationships. When people can look in your eyes, even if it's in a picture, it, they, they can see you. They can see you and they can feel you. And um, just... Remember that little tip there, that they have to remember you. So when we're following up, 80% of sales are made on the fifth or fifth to twelfth contact. Fifth to twelfth. People most sales are not made the first time you meet someone. That's microwave marketing. <laughs> it's gonna take some time to to um, get to know them and more touches. So you need a follow-up system. Okay, you need a system, not just haphazardly going out there and figuring out ways to follow up. You need a system. So that's what I'm going to teach you to stay the top of mind. Okay, now let's talk about follow up systems. First of all, you want to follow up different ways, not just one way. You don't only want your follow up system to be email. Okay, and I'm going to ask you guys all right now. And of course, I can't hear you, but in your head, <laughs> how many of you send out emails to your clients? How many send out emails? Think of if you do that. Uh, that's question one. Question two is, how many, do you love getting emails? Is that just like the most fun thing for you to get up every day and run to your email box and see how many emails you've got? <laughs> I, I think I know what you're thinking right now. Um, so you need to bridge the gap between high tech and personal touch high tech being emails and personal touch which was, is the main thing we're going to talk about and i think i have way more emails of that in my box <laughs> so i really this email statistic here <clears throat> um, only about 11 percent of emails are actually open and i'm pretty positive that that is actually lower than that now um, it's been a little while since i've checked on it but um 11 but the bottom line uh, the one that really blew my mind is that only 2% of emails are actually read. So even if you send 100 emails, only maybe one or two someone might read, might. <laughs> and I think it's getting lower. And this is just a fun little meme here. 15 years ago, people were like, oh, you know, letters and ding, you've got mail. I'll never forget. So exciting when, that, when the thing said, you've got mail. 
And then now today it's totally opposite. It's like, oh my gosh, a letter. Nobody ever gets them anymore, right? Okay, another statistic. Only 3% of the mail that we receive in our mailboxes is personal. So I'm sure you've gone to your mailbox before and you've grabbed that stack of mail and you throw it on the kitchen counter, right? What stands out, right? A lot of people just kind of just go through it by their mailbox and throw it away. But let me tell you, emails have one or 2% open rate or, or a read rate. Greeting cards, actual greeting cards that are in the mail have a 100% open rate. That means if you send someone a personal letter or a card, they're going to read it. <laughs> they're not going to throw it in the trash. They're actually going to read it. Think about that. Um, the tangible thank you card, thank you card, generates more referral business than any other form of communication. Any other form. So, oh, here's another one. Fewer than 3% of successful salespeople and business owners send thank you cards. In my tutoring business, my, my school that I had, when those parents would come in with their kids, uh, before they even left, before they even walked out and got in their car and drove away, we, would, we had gone to the store, we bought a big box of thank you cards, we'd grab a thank you card, um, we'd handwrite a nice letter to, or a nice note to them, thanking them for coming by and taking a tour, and we'd handwrite, handwrite it, and then it would be in the box ready to go to the mail the next day. Um, put that on your list of things to do if you're not doing it already. <laughs> okay. Write this book down. Um, Joe Girard's How to Sell Anything to Anybody is a great little short book to read. Uh, I'll just tell you basically what it says is Joe Girard, and this, this is back, like he wrote it, I think in the 70s, like 75 or something like that. So a long time ago, <laughs> long time before email and all this good stuff. Um, he holds still the Guinness Book of World's Records. He sold 1,500 cars in a year. He sold an average of six cars every day. 13,001 cars he sold during his selling career. I don't know how many years that was. What was his secret? He sent every single contact, contact, a card, 13 cards a year. So he would, and back then, he had to handwrite all of those cards. And it was everyone he met. It wasn't just people that came in and bought a car. He sent them to everyone. And it got so crazy, he had sold so many cars that he actually um, he actually hired a team of people to handwrite all of these notes and hand address them and, and mail them out. So pretty, pretty fascinating that he still holds that, that record. I just met a Mary Kay consultant this last weekend at an event, and uh, Mary Kay, $1.2 billion industry. Um, Mary Kay, Ash's key to success, she actually teaches her sales reps or taught them to send three handwritten thank you notes every night before bed. Pretty awesome. And those of you in real estate would probably know Tom Hopkins, or if you're a business person and read the How to Master the Art of Selling, his story is within five years, he went from making less than 50 bucks a month in real estate to building an annual sales volume of over 14 million. His secret weapon, 10 handwritten thank you cards every single day. 99% of his business um, was by referral within three years. And by the way, if you're in real estate or know anybody in real estate, uh, you need to send them my way to tell, <laughs> you can tell them about this because uh, I know several, more than one realtor that has 100% referral business because they send thank you cards and they use um, the system. Okay, hope you guys are still with me. <laughs> okay, let's talk about thank you cards. This is really important. When you send a thank you card, okay, <laughs> this is kind of a, uh, this is a big deal to me. So think about this, thanking people through the process. You know, Think people before they buy anything from you. Um, example is this. There's someone that I, there's a, a couple of people that I met ever since I moved out here that I've met for coffee. And the first thing they do, I actually have more than one or two people. A lot of people I've met for coffee. Maybe I met them at the networking event and then we met and they automatically want to try to sell me something. And before even trying to get to know me at all. And 
Then we leave and I never hear from them. I send a thank you card after I meet someone. If I meet someone for coffee, I thank them for going, taking the time out of their day to do that because that's a big deal. So thanking people through the process is important before you do business with them, after they buy something for you, if they do, and maybe to end down the road for sure. Especially if you're like a realtor or someone selling big things like cars. Uh, you set yourself apart by reaching out in kindness and this, please write this down. Think about this, put this in, do, do not let this go away. When you're reaching out in kindness, which is what you should be doing when you send these cards is you reach out in kindness with purely the intent to stay in touch and send out kindness, not to get business. Okay. Super important. If you send out a thank you card and you put your business card in it, it's terribly tacky, first of all. And number two, you're sending that card out to get business and they'll know that. Okay. And they even know that if you don't do that, you know, if your intention is to get business from them, it's not going to work. You have to be that person. Remember back in the relationships and building personal relationships. If you're that kind person and you just want to say, tell people and send out kindness, it will do everything for you. It makes a huge difference. So again, when you say thank you, only say thank you. When you send a birthday card, just say happy birthday. <laughs> Don't say, oh, and by the way, <laughs> can I have a referral? Don't ever do that. Never ask for referrals. Same thing with everything. Um, you know, I had someone actually sent their Christmas card to me with their business card in it. And, um, you know, they didn't know. They didn't know. But it really makes a huge difference when you do that. It's like getting the, the insurance birthday cards and you know it's just a marketing piece because you're getting old and you need more insurance. <laughs> anyway, hopefully that's not true. Okay, hope you guys are, are still with me. Let's see. Oh, you are. Look at that. <laughs> okay, um, this is huge, you guys. Okay, so we talked about relationships. We talked about uh, referrals. But once you get those customers, once you get a customer and they sign up with you and they're your customer, your client, right? Customer lifetime value. If you are a business owner and you do not understand what customer lifetime value is, this is probably the main thing you need to know in your business, okay? Let me give you an, my example because I learned really fast what it, what it meant. So again, parents would come in with their kids. When they came in, like, I'll, let me give you the example of the very first client I had, uh, the one where I put one out in the paper and got her. It was a little boy. He was in first grade. I took such good care of them. I sent birthday cards to him and the, and the parents. I made such good friends with them and took and just really loved on them so much that they told everyone. <laughs> they told everyone on their block and then they told everybody. And I just kept doing that over and over and over again. And that's how I built my business. So customer lifetime value is this. So that little boy, for example, I think maybe he paid $500 a month. So when we get a new student, it might mean $500 a month. Okay, just, it was somewhere around there. It was different for everyone. But if they say it a whole entire year, then you took 500 times 12, which is $6,000. But that's not all they were worth, right? Because if he was in first grade, I want him to stay at least another 10 years. I want him to stay with me through high school. That's a lot of money. And then what I, what you, you, a lot of people forget is how many people did they tell and bring to me? How many customers did I get because I took care of him, them? I'm going to guarantee you that that first client that I took such good care of was worth a million dollars a lot because they told everyone. So customer lifetime value, think about that. Spend some time in your business and look at if you've been in business for a while, go back to your customers and see how much they spent over their lifetime. And that's the customer lifetime value. That's what you're selling. That's what, when you're selling someone, think about they're golden, right? They're not just worth two bucks or 500 bucks or whatever. Okay. More statistics. <laughs> I hope I'm not boring you with statistics, but they're so important. All right. The number one reason a customer does not come back, does not come back. So you sell it something to them. And the number one reason they don't come back is they forgot about you. Number one. And I have a story from a realtor um, in a minute. 
Customers do not leave because of price. They don't. I have complete pr proof of that. Um, my story is I started my tutoring business out of my house for, and I charged very little because I wanted to save or I wanted to help all the people that couldn't afford the big tutoring business that, center that I worked in. So um, I learned really fast once I opened my business that I had to raise my prices. And uh, I kept slowly raising my prices a little bit more, a little bit more. I had to. I mean, I had a lot of business expenses and I couldn't give everything away anymore. So long story short, I, I raised my prices a little bit so much that I was literally, my business was literally the highest priced after school tutoring um, school in the whole area. And guess what? No one left. <laughs> no one left and they still referred people to me. So they don't leave because of price. They leave because they don't feel appreciated. And I'll bet you, you can think of businesses that are like that, that you didn't feel appreciated. I'm going to give you another example in a second. And this, the bottom right here, people spend more money trying to get new customers instead of appreciating the ones they already have. Not just the customers you have, but everybody. You start appreciating your current customers, they're going to tell the world. And guess what? That's free. That is free marketing. Um, it's way easier and way cheaper to do that. Here is a big, here's my big story example of appreciation. So I'm a beetle girl. I've owned seven new beetles. The pink one and the, the big one right there is the one I have now. And they're not making them anymore. Very sad, but I love my bug. I've had it for a couple of years. Um, and I'll tell you something, all of these cars that I've purchased since I think 2000, when was it? <laughs> 2001 was the first year I bought the car and I've owned seven of them. And guess what? I bought all of those cars Think about this. I really want you to soak it in from a different dealership, a different salesperson, every one of them, a different dealership, a different salesperson. Tell me some, I don't even know who sold me the pink one. In fact, I forgot who it was the day after he sold it to me. I never heard from him again. So what if that first guy who sold me that first beetle would have kept in touch with me? Guess who would have gotten all my business? So. I think enough said on that one, right? <laughs> okay, here is a good story. This is um, uh, someone who, <laughs> I think he might be on here today. Um, he said this, this is really, really good. I'm a realtor in Arizona. As with most people in my profession and in most sales or customer-focused business, I was terrible at following up. He was terrible at following up, mainly because there wasn't a good system to nurture his relationships. Thankfully, he said, I was introduced to an amazing follow-up system and my prayers were answered. I entered all of my new clients and potential customers into the system and his business exploded. However, he got so busy, or he said he was too lazy, to load his existing clients into the system, existing and past clients into the system. So, over the holidays, he started going through his old files, entering clients from years ago, and sent them all holiday cards. They were all people he'd lost contact with. So guess what happened? Just with, like the picture shows, they all started coming back, undeliverable. So he actually took it a step further and went and looked in all the MLS, and he found out that all of those people had sold their homes again using a different filter. He says he's lost nearly 75000 in potential commissions. So I don't think I have to keep going from there. I think he learned his lesson, right? <laughs> but we can learn from him. Keep in touch and, and appreciate the clients that you have. Okay, so building long-term relationships, finally, um, rather than encouraging a one-time sale, appreciated, appreciated customers become raving fans while increasing your referral business dramatically. And please write this down and put this in your head. Never ask for a referral. Deserve it. Do not ever ask for a referral. In fact, if you have that on your email or on your cards or on your anything to, to say anything about getting a referral, take it down because your job is to create the relationships and appreciate people so much that you don't have to ask them. They're just going to automatically tell people about you. There is, however, one way that you, one 
time, the relationship marketing way <laughs> to ask for referrals. And I love this. And I didn't come with, up with this either, sadly, but um, you ask prospects who do not, aren't ready to buy your product or service or don't need it. If they don't have a need for your product or service, ask them if they know someone who does. Okay. Build the relationships with them, talk to them and say, oh, it's okay. You, you know, obviously this isn't right for you, but do you happen to have any, know anyone else that could use it? So the best referral is the unsolicited one. Okay, so I've learned that people will forget what you said. They will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My favorite quote of all time. Okay, this story is, uh, this is my final story here. Uh, <laughs> And it's proof of this year and a half of me living here and why what I did works and why people know who I am, why I'm getting referrals all the time. I'm not even asking. I mean, I get calls every week of people either wanting to work with me or wanting to refer me to someone. And this is why. So my story is this. So I was at a chamber mixer and I just went by myself and I was kind of walked around. There was this guy who was a financial advisor. And I, this is what I do. Uh, what I did do at every place I go is I take my phone. Um, it's the Send Out Cards app on the phone, which I'll show you in a second. And I took a selfie picture of us. And then right there on the spot, I created a card. I put our selfie picture on the front. I wrote in the inside. I, I, um, I said, oh, you know, something like, it was really nice meeting you at the chamber mixer. I can't wait to hear more about your business. Um, have a great day, whatever, just something very simple. And um, all my contact information was on the back of the card. And, and he called me like right away. As soon as he got the card, he called me and it happens quite often. Every time I send a card to someone, most people call me and uh, I went to visit him and we got to know a little bit about his business and he was asking about marketing and he was asking about, you know, the system and how I did that, all that kind of stuff. And I told him, well, he wanted to meet with me again. And I said, well, um, I won't, I don't know when I can meet again because tomorrow I'm leaving for Nebraska to move my father who has dementia into, um, into a memory care, like assisted living. And I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. And it was, it was something that happened fairly quickly. And so, uh, it was really hard. It was probably, well, it was the hardest thing I ever did in my whole life. <laughs> so when I got home, this card was in the mail. Um, that's a picture of my favorite picture of my dad and I. And uh, he actually had took, he took the time to go on Facebook and he found the picture. He wrote this beautiful note. It had nothing to do with selling me anything. <laughs> and, um, and it just made me cry. I have this card and it's, it's with me all the time. And, and it's one of the most meaningful things anybody's ever done for me. I do this to people all the time, but no one had ever done it to me. And this was amazing. And, uh, Anyway, who do you think I'm going to send my referrals to? I'll just ask you that. So in his book, how many of you have read The Power of Intention? Wayne Dyer, a really good book. I just read it not too long ago. He tells us that research has shown that a simple act of kindness directed towards another improves the functioning of the immune system and stimulates the production of serotonin, which is that feel-good chemical in our brain, in both both the recipient of the kindness and the person extending it. But this blew my mind. Even more amazing is that people observing that act, act of kindness, someone else, even just watching someone giving some kindness to someone has similar beneficial results. And if you felt anything when I told you the story about my dad, that's what this means. And lastly, giving to give, um, like I said before, it's only to give, not to give business, because what you send in, out in life is what comes back to you. And uh, so anyway, uh, these are pictures, just so you know, of um, this. You think you can't build relationships on Facebook. Well, I'm, a, I'm the, the, the proof that you can actually build relationships on Facebook with people you do not know. Um, I post on Facebook for people to post their favorite picture or their favorite pet picture. That's always a good one. And uh, these are some of the cards that I've sent to people where I found their picture on Facebook and I just save it to my 
my computer or my phone and then I create a card and I put the picture on the front of the card and, and send it to people all the time. So anyway, it's kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> so anyway, um, raise your hands since you guys are there. Have you heard of send out cards or tried it or anybody raise your hand if you know anything about it. Okay, good. Yeah, I've showed a couple of people. I know Sherry and Renee just started with it. Um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to show you about this system. It literally has changed my entire life. It is the most amazing thing I've ever found, my V1 marketing tool that I use. And I'm just gonna tell you guys, you don't have to use this system, okay? You can, you can go buy cards at the store or go meander around and try to pick out cards and, and hand write them and the whole thing. But this, I promise you, is one of the best. It, it is seriously, like I said, it's changed my life. So I'm gonna show you what this system can do. It's not just a send card sending system. It has so many amazing things for business. There are three ways that you can send cards. You can sell heartfelt cards, groups of cards like for holidays, and cards that you can schedule out. Um, so this is kind of what the, the back end of the system looks like. Uh, a heartfelt card, I'll just tell you, Cody Bateman is the, um, he's the founder of this company and he created this company. I'm super passionate about working with people and companies that have a heart. And his story is he was in Salt Lake city, Utah. He had his kids and his, his little kids. He was had young ones then and his wife packed in a car. They were going to move to the East coast. Um, he got a job there and he had what he calls now a prompting. He had a prompting to, he told his mother goodbye and his brother was a couple blocks away. He could see him, you know, from afar. And, and um, he had this prompting that he felt like I need to go say goodbye to my brother and tell him I love him. And he said they were all in a hurry and he didn't act on the prompting. And uh, so he didn't <laughs> do it. And he went and moved away. And two months later, I think it was two months, his brother was killed in a horrible accident. And, uh, it just killed him. It actually floored him. And he promised uh, God, his brother, <laughs> and heaven that he was going to create some way for people to act in their promptings to reach out in kindness on a moment's notice. So a heartfelt card is a card where you can create a card on the spot, create a unique message to that person, uh, completely customized with pictures, and you can push send and the card is, um, they get the card in a few days. It's super simple. Uh, I was actually, I should just show you how I use it on my phone, but um, I can show you in person too. Some of you guys that are here already have seen it. So basically you can create the card on the computer or on your phone. Um, that's a heartfelt card send. There's tons of cards. I mean, and they change them all the time. Every time I go in, there's new cards. There's cards like the one that shows like the father one, and every, the ones that have other people's pictures. You can actually put your own picture in those. They're beautiful. You can also send, um, you can send gifts. They have really good brownies. That's what kind of they're famous for, but they have, they have uh, gift cards, they have jewelry, they have gift baskets, all sorts of things that you can send with the card. So you can actually create the card, add a gift, push send, and it's, they stuff it, stamp it, everything. They send it from Salt Lake City, Utah. You don't have to touch anything or go buy a box. <laughs> um, the second kind of card that they have is called group send cards. These are awesome for holidays or if you're going to send out a marketing piece at all. Um, you just, you can upload your entire contact list into the system. It's called the relationship system and it has, you can put birthdays, anything you want in there. You can literally create one card like this Christmas card. And you can say, I want to send this card to this giant group of people and push send. And all those cards can be completely personalized the way you do it. It can say, dear John or dear Sherry or dear whatever, um, completely personalized. Um, and so you can send out literally your holiday cards in like five minutes really, really quickly. Love those. They also have what's really pretty awesome is scheduled card sends. These are called campaign cards. They have sets of cards you can actually purchase that are pre-designed. If you have any sort of business where like they have some for, at least it's just on the next one. No, it's not. Um, things like for all kinds of different industries, you can go in and do that, but you can literally set up any sets of cards 
and say that you want this card to go out immediately and this next card to go out on their birthday and this next card to go out on June 1st or whatever. You can literally set it up as if as it was, was an autoresponder. It's amazing. You never have to remember people's birthdays. <laughs> um, they have the most, the greatest CRM, the, a great management system for your contacts. You can keep everything in there, including spouses, birthdays, anniversaries, and it's super awesome to be able to just put everybody in there. And um, if you forget what cards you sent, you can go back to history and click on it and you can see all the cards that you've sent to them. I have a card I love sending to people and I don't want to send it to them twice accidentally so I can go check it. So um, I'll tell you, first of all, you can be on a free account. So I want you all to get on a free account. Um, whoever sent you to this, if you haven't, uh, don't, don't already have it, then you go back to the person who actually sent you to this and they will give you, um, you need a sponsor to, to have this system. Um, and I'll explain that in a second too. So they can give you access and get your own free account. So there's four subscriptions. You can be on a free account and just pay per card. Uh, even if you do that, it's still only $2 and 75 cents a card, like way less than going to Walmart and a lot less time. <laughs> um, it's a little less if you send to groups of people um, and you pay, I think an extra dollar. This is like the a la carte, a la carte system, but it's still way cheaper than going to the store. <laughs> um, oh, there it is. So that's where you can create a, a card like that. Okay. The next one is a $17 a month for $17 a month. You can, the cards are only $2 and 25 cents. They're $2 a card. If you send them in groups and you get a 15% discount on the gifts and it's, it includes, that's what this is. It includes the whole relationship management system unlimited. You can keep as many pictures as you want contacts in there. It's just unbelievable. This is my favorite one. This is what I'm on right now. Um, for most of the time anyway, is 97 a month. And what that is, if you become a card sender, and you, if you're not a card sender now, you might want to start on the free one or maybe the $17, especially if you have a business, and get in the habit. But once you start sending cards, the 97 a month, Cody Bateman created this because... the last one, this one I do on months like uh, so those are the four plans, but definitely everybody, uh, you can all, depending on who you're with, you can, you should send your first card free and try it out. Then you'll have your free account and then you can do whatever you want. If you want to upgrade, you can or whatever. Uh, a couple more things you can actually send in for, I think it's $49 here. They'll send you that paper and you put your handwriting in there and they'll create your own handwriting font. It'll be your handwriting, which is super cool. And you could put signatures in there. So if you're a husband and wife team, you can have, you can put, I don't know, remember if it's four signatures. So you could just put your name or his name or yours and his or whatever you want to put as a signature. And it's your actual signature that you can put in the card. They also have a first impressions kit. Those are um, cards that you schedule out. Like you decide which cards are going to go out and then you push go and the cards get set when you tell it to. That's like $99. I think you get everything for that. Uh, oh yeah, that's a special that they're doing. And then they have the campaign store, like I said, with different, like if you know people in dental or automotive or beauty salons or landscaping or whatever, they have cards for every single, like so many different um, different ones. And here's the best thing, part of all, and you guys are so amazing for sticking this out with me. How would you like to have your send out card subscription paid for? All of my cards are free. Send out cards pays me to send cards. That's how cool this is. So there is a way for you to get your subscription paid for. And this is how you do it. You can become an affiliate. So I love affiliate marketing. I join all kinds of affiliate things. Amazon's one. I'm going to do a webinar on that. But for $59 a year, you get to be a Send Out Cards affiliate. What that means is if you share this system with someone, you become someone's sponsor and they go, oh yeah, I want to do it. And they say, yeah, give me your sponsor ID. And they sign up. Send Out Cards will pay you a commission. They pay you a percentage of every single person that you share this with. And the coolest thing is 
you only need to share it with four people. If you want to be on the 97 a month and you share it with four people that want to be a customer with send out cards, your commissions pay for your subscription. So your entire marketing uh, is paid for. It's amazing. So that's one thing you can do with send out cards. You can also build a team. Uh, you can actually add more people and then you can get paid, you get paid on the people. Like if those customers become affiliates and they put, you can get paid on different, everybody underneath you that keeps signing up. So there is ways to actually make money with the system. If you want to do that, um, it's actually really fun, <laughs> especially working with people that are happy sending cards all the time. So get back to the person who invited you here. I am offering you guys all a free marketing strategy session. You just go to meetwithsue.com or call me or whatever. I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, call me, email me, whatever. And I would love to talk to you about your specific business and I'll spend 30 days with you. If you, especially if you're on the 97 or 147 plan, I will work with you. I'll help you design uh, backs of cards. Um, let me stop the share here. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Get back so I can see you guys' faces. Yay, you're still here. Um, <laughs> um, I'm happy to help you create branded backs of the cards. Um, you can do whatever you want on the backs of the cards. You know, like here's one that my sister and I, you know, we love to help wineries. Um, you could do just about anything. This is another back of my card that I put. You can put anything on the back and you cre can create different ones. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is it's not just regular two panels. You can send flat cards, which are like five, they're all five by seven. So they fit in a frame, which is awesome. Postcards and these gigantic cards. I made this one for myself <laughs> and put a giant thing. These are big giant cards, you know, compared to this one. So anyway, they're really fun. I'm going to let you guys open up your, your, uh, you know, come on and talk to me because I feel like I've been talking forever. And let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything at all. Yes, Dottie. <laughs> I, I have questions. Great. So you, you can become an affiliate for $59 for a year. You pay $59 every year? Yes. And then if you don't want to do it anymore, you just don't pay it. Okay. Yeah. And then I share the system with somebody. I sponsor them and they sign up to get either a, a free account or a $17 account or a $97 account, whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And if I share it with four people and four people get some kind of an account, then the $97 a month is paid for. Do I need to get four new people every month? Well, you want it. Well, yes, you need four, at least four people every month on the, on the same subscription that you're on. So because every month send out cards is going to pay you, I think it's 20% if they're a customer that you get a percentage of what everything that they send, including um, gifts. So if they, like I have one girl who is a Rodan and Fields representative and she sends cards and gifts to her team all the time and her customers and potential ones. So she spends a lot of money sending gifts with people. So I get a percentage of all of that. Yes. So I need to enroll some four people in the 97. If I go with a $97 a month plan, I need to enroll four people at the $97 a month plan. Yeah, they keep, and then as long as they're paying every month, your your uh, commissions are going to cover it exactly. Yeah. So my commissions cover it. Okay. Yeah, so you get paid every week if you decide you want to do that. And like I said, you can just do a, an affiliate or you can build teams of people. So I have people that love this so much that they became an affiliate and then they signed other people up and then I get paid on all of them too. Okay. But you can do it that way if you want. Some people just want to be a customer. I have tons. I ha I think everybody needs to be a customer for sure because it's no brainer to me. But. Well, ninety seven dollars a month, unless I spend a send a whole bunch of cards, that's a lot of money every month. It depends on you know. It depends on what you're doing. So let me just yeah. talk about this. So when I when this first started and they the company just put just did this last month or last year. I remember a lot of people, including me, said, ooh, 97 a month, let's see. Um, you know what was amazing is when I said I'm doing this and I committed to started sending cards and I'm like, you know, every month it was like, well, I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> so I sent a lot of cards and I sent them, this is huge, you guys, 
with the intention of staying in touch and pre appreciating your customers and and sending out kindness i i'm telling you the love i got back the customers that i got because of it the people who wanted to work with me and i literally will get calls every week i mean i'm making i just need one new client <laughs> and that covers my whole year of um of card sending so it's up to you now if you're going to start sending cards say like for example my best story i have two of them but one i'll just tell you like this uh it was a realtor guy and he's like this is the greatest thing and he goes i'm going to send cards to everyone in my neighborhood and so he wanted to send it for fourth of july last year and so i said okay and i took a lot of time helping him create this heartfelt card because he wanted it to be marketing he's so used to, he was a realtor he was used to like marketing stuff right and what do you call that with a realtors call it when they're out there farming the you know that's farming that's not building relationships so what happened was he sent out all these cards and two weeks later he goes i'm so mad not one person listed their house with me and i sent all those cards out and i said that's why because <laughs> you're when you push that send button that's what you send it out for so it's really about you and your heart and what you believe and how much kindness and love you want to send out in the world and um that's it. It works for me. I have people that like, it cures depression. It makes people happy. It's, it's really fun. I don't know, Sherry, you have some stories, don't you? You've been sending cards out here and there. People love your cards, right? <laughs> and Renee, she's been sending cards too. So. No, I've been sending them. I'm using them. I'm actually trying to get a lot better. Uh. <laughs> it's a habit. You know, it, be, it has to become a habit. It is. And actually, I didn't realize how easy it was um, to um, use it on the phone until we were at my networking group the other day. And that was so cool because I would wait. I'd take the picture. I'd go back, upload it to the computer and then do it. And I was like, oh, it was just like done right there. <laughs> oh, I know. it's so amazing. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. And you know, if you guys, if you know, there's really, there's businesses that spend a lot of money on with send out cards, like, well, realtors, they all need to be doing that for sure. Car salesmen, but like chiropractor offices, dental offices, those kind of things, they'll start, those are the kind of people you want to share this with because they're going to do it. That's it's just the best marketing tool for them. So, but you know what? I, I do it because I love it. I love sending. It's addictive. <laughs> it makes me feel amazing. When I'm in a bad mood, I just have to sit down and send some cards and it's worth $97 a month. In fact, it's worth $147 a month. I just don't, I, I do, I use the $147 on the months that I want to send out groups of cards, but I'm addicted to the heartfelt cards where I actually put a picture on the card. And one of my stories, you guys, I literally posted on Facebook, post your favorite pet picture. And I swear, almost 100 people posted their cat or dog picture on Facebook. I went through all of them and I right-clicked, I saved it to my computer, I, I created a card. I did not know these people, okay? I sent one card to this girl who, with her cat on the front. And all I wrote in it was, oh my gosh, Fluffy's so cute. Thanks for posting it on my Facebook, your Facebook friend Sue. That was it. She drove two hours to hear me speak. When I went to Southern California, she signed up immediately, like at the event. She wouldn't let me leave until she could sign up and send cards. And I helped her with her real estate business. It just, that's how easy it is. It's just a no-brainer. Yeah, but Dottie? So you sent it to her on Facebook or you sent it to her in the, oh. in the U.S. mail? In the mail. I sent her a physical card, but I got, when she posted the picture of her cat on Facebook, I put it on the front of the card and then right. I texted her and I said, Hey, you know, your kitty's so cute. Thanks for posting. And I want to send you a surprise. Can I have your mailing address? And she gave it to me. I sent her the card and she flipped out and literally drove two hours to see me. This happens all. It's the funniest thing. That's my best story. <laughs> so anyway, well, if there's no other questions or comments,
through any of that stuff. And like I said, I am happy to, if you're on the 97 or 147, anyone that's watching this because this is recorded and other people will be seeing it. Um, I'm happy to spend 30 days with you, the first 30 days, helping you get your contact list in there, um, getting it all situated and coming up with a follow-up plan, a relationship marketing plan um, to help you get in this habit and start seeing results for your business because, um, and I'll help you create really cool backs for your cards too. That's always fun. Are the backs on the cards, are they promoting you as a business person? You can do anything you want on the backs. I have, you know, like I have this one that's just me and my sister. So I send that to just, you know, family and stuff. Okay. And I have the ones where I have my, you know, my business stuff on it. Okay. If you have, if you have um, products or anything, like Sherry has some different products that she promotes. She could do backs if she was promoting her hemp products, for example. She could put pictures of those on the back of the card. You can do anything. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right now, right now I'm using the, um, the book cover as my back. <laughs> I love that. That's really, really cool. And you can also send, by the way, not just, like I said, for free on the 97 and 147, you can send the, the two panel card, the, the three panel card. These all are free too. three panels. You can do three panel cards. You can do a postcard and a flat card, a five by seven flat card, all free. And then these big cards, I, you only pay a dollar fifty extra. I don't even think you pay extra postage. I, I can't remember, but yeah, it's pretty fun. So, okay. okay. Thank you, Sue. You Thank guys, you. go ahead and wrap it up and stop the recording. Thanks, you guys all again. If you guys are watching this, the recording, please go back to the person that. Um, invited you and thank you all for being here. Thank you.